Folks, if you're staying for Sunday school, come and have a seat. We're about to get ready. Yes, dear. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week one of the evangelism class. For those who don't know me, which is very few, I am Marjorie, Marjorie Roberts. Um, hello. Here you go, Jerry. This is Jerry Dickinson, by the way. Give it up Jerry for my Dickinson. girl. On? Yeah, it should be on. Speak into it now. Speak it. You got to eat the mic, though. Eat the mic. Okay. I'm Jerry Dickinson, and I'm, you might ask why I'm here. Well, when I go outside these doors, I just know that so many people don't know the Lord. And, and what does that mean? That means, well, they're not going to eternity like we're doing. They're going to hell. And I just... Um, very small percentage of those that um, just don't know the Lord. It's, it's large. It's, well, I'll say, it. it's less than 2% of people that, uh, no, that's, that's the other one. Anyway, the, the, most of those people don't, don't know the Lord, and I just have a burden for them. And um, so I've been for a while just going out and talking to people and giving out tracts and we have a uh, a book today called uh, "One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven," and you'll you'll learn how to how to tell others about the Lord and so many other things. So we just wanted to share that and have more people come to the Lord. There's what the book's about. Could you read that? No, you guys should be up there. Okay, this, this book is a book I talked about, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven. And it's about sending every believer out with confidence, boldness, and the love of Jesus to reach a very lost, very lost and dying world. People will not believe in Jesus and call upon him for their salvation unless they hear about what he has done for them. And how can they hear unless each Christian takes the great name of Jesus to every person possible? This is a very convicting book about the importance of sharing your faith and how to do it. Today we're covering uh, chapters one, two, and three in the book. And after class, the following will be, uh, resources will be available in the lobby. The book is $10. Then there's a, a study guide that's free and a summary of the first three chapters, which we are giving out and that's free too. So we'll be in the lobby. Hopefully you all want a book because it's really worth worth reading. All right, so we're going to jump in, and I'm going to ask you guys a question, being that the book is titled One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven. So I'm going to ask you this question. What is one thing you can't do in heaven? Anybody? <laughs> Peanut <laughs> gallery over here. What is that? He said cuss. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I needed that laugh. Um, Think about it. What's one thing you can't do in heaven? What are we talking about? Go ahead. Witness. Witness. So share your faith with a non-believer. But why? Everyone in heaven is a believer. So we're actually going to go right into a video. It's about seven minutes long. We've actually played it here before a couple of times. But we feel that it's, it's really good to watch again, especially for this class, to get you ramped up for the next six weeks. Is that rescuing the perishing? Yep. Yeah, it's called so just, rescuing the perishing. She just gave me And it's a, a very convicting little video. 
I hope this works. Should work. Mark Cahill, who wrote the book, is the one doing the talking. I met him years ago at, uh, when he was giving a speech up in Lancaster, and that got me uh, interested, too, in, in just going out and saving, saving evangelizing. Sorry. If your dream is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, trust me, death beats life. Do you believe hell's a real place? If you believe hell's a real place, you can never ask yourself the question, how can I share my faith with that person? The only question you can ask yourself is, how can I not share my faith with that person? Do you know there's people in hell wishing and wanting that you would tell somebody the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ? People in heaven believe in personal evangelism. People in hell believe in personal evangelism. But what is sad today, born-again believers in Jesus Christ on planet Earth today don't believe in personal evangelism. Every second, seven people die. By the time you put your head on your pillow tonight, over 600,000 people have walked off into eternity. Heaven or hell as we speak. Got a very simple question for you. Do you care? Much tougher question, though. Do you care enough to do something about it? Because trust me on the simple fact, if you do not care enough to do something about it, trust me, you do not care. And I'll go ahead and tell you, that's the problem we got with the American church today. We swear to the high heavens we care where all these people are going to spend eternity, but I don't care enough to get in a conversation with my next door neighbor, with one of my friends from high school. Think about that. What's it going to take for you to get out of your comfort zone? What have we done? We've, we've formed a type of Christianity that did not exist 2,000 years ago. We've made sharing our faith an optional part of Christianity. It was never an optional part. It was what we were living for to see six billion people saved. Does your heart beat that way? What's it going to take to get out of your comfort zone? You want a heavy piece of truth? Here's a heavy piece of truth. I can guarantee you one thing that you can't do in heaven that you can do down here. You can worship God in heaven. You can praise God in heaven. You can sing songs to God in heaven. You can read your Bible in heaven. But one thing you can't do in heaven that you can do down here is share your faith with a non-believer. Okay, why? There's no non-believers there. Do you know from the day you die to the end of eternity, and there is no end of eternity, you'll never, ever, ever be able to share your faith with a lost person again? If that's true and you know it's true, shouldn't that be one of the high callings of our life is to reach out to all these lost people? Do you understand when I take my last breath with this body, I will never talk with a lost person again for all of eternity? That's a heavy piece of truth. Haven't you been comforted by the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you not been? Or are you just going to sit here and sing songs about it while there's an entire world out there with so much pain in their life and you've got the answer to it and you will not give it away to these people? If you're not out of your comfort zone, I'm about to challenge you to get out of it, okay? And to stay out of it. I'm crazy. Okay, I'm crazy. I'm getting crazier in a biblical way. I want six billion people saved. And it's not going to happen unless all of us who claim the name of Jesus Christ walk in and stand up for what we believe. Does that make sense? You can swear to the high heavens you care, but if you don't care enough to talk with somebody, trust me, you do not care. There's people at gay and lesbian festivals that need so desperately to hear from you. There's people at Antioch that so desperately need to hear from you. And you're keeping it to yourself. Selfish. Gotta be selfless. But you have some serious questions to ask yourself. You're still gonna keep living the same old, same old mediocre Christian life, Mark Cahill? You're gonna start getting out of your comfort zone and start serving the God of this universe like you're supposed to? I have some serious questions to ask myself. And that's one of the defining characteristics in my life to get out of my comfort zone and start standing up for what I believe, no matter what the cost. Is there a cost when you stand up for it? Is there a cost when you stand up for it? You better believe there's a cost for it. Jesus Christ knew it. But he knew his dad was worth it. The question is, when, I'm, when am I going to get to the point that I know my God is worth it? No matter what the cost.
If I can't witness out there and I can only witness down here, what's the only way we'll ever get good at is what? Practice, because it's not a gift. It's just an issue of obedience or disobedience. It's not a gift. It's just an issue of obedience or disobedience. We plant, we water, only God gives the increase. Real simple. Death means just the beginning. It's just the beginning in a place called heaven or just the beginning in a place called hell. So always remember that the people you go to a funeral, they're not dead, they're alive. The question is where are they and who warned them? Who spoke truth into their life and do them? Snatch people from the fire and do not let them go to hell. You snatch them back and don't let them go there. The question is when you walk out of here, where are you going? When you die, you don't get a do-over. You don't get a mulligan. You don't get a second chance. Die with no regrets. Obey the Lord Jesus Christ in everything he says to do before you take your last breath. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He takes none. We need to stand up and be bold. A hundred years now, we're all dead anyways. We're all dead. Understand what matters. Souls matter to God, yes or no? It was proven on the cross 2,000 years ago. Your job is to warn people. It's their choice what to do. But if you love somebody, trust me, you'll blow the trumpet loud and long and hard, okay, and snatch them from the fire. Do not let them take a last breath without the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello? There we go. Sorry. I'm not used to this thing. Um, what kind of thoughts do we have about that video? Because we have a little bit of a recap on the different things that we just watched. Intense. Yes. What's that? It is urgent. It is. As believers, we need to go out there and be bold and, and, not, and get out of our comfort zone. It's hard. It really is. Um, but we're going to do a recap of the video. Um, bullet point one. Do you believe in hell is a real place? If you do, you can't ask yourself, how can I share my faith with that person? You can only ask, how can I not share my faith with that person? Bullet point number two. Every second, seven people die. Do we care? Do we really care enough to do something about it? Now, that number has probably changed since this video came out. Uh, we read different things. It said every two seconds, six people die. It, this video was done like 10 years ago. So, um, By the time you put your head on the pillow tonight, over 600,000 people have walked off into eternity. 600,000. What is it going to take for you to get out of your comfort zone? We have made sharing our faith an optional part of Christianity. It was never an option back then. There are people out there who desperately need to hear from you and will keep it to yourself. This is selfish. You must be selfless. Sharing your faith is not a gift. It's an issue of obedience or disobedience. Jesus gives the great commission to all Christians. Would you like to read that scripture? Matthew 8, 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, we're, again, it, it's not a gift. We're told, we're told by the Lord to go and tell. Correct. Uh, and only 2% of people, of, of Christians, ever share their faith. Only 2%. Mm -hmm. That kind of mind-blowing, too, you know? That is very I mean, just, just think, if every, every Christian in the United States, every Christian just bought 
told one person about the Lord and they came to Jesus. What a different country this would be. We have millions more Christians. It would, <laughs> and that, that's really convicting to me. I mean, so. And we'll, we'll, we'll learn how to do all that. that that's what part of uh, this teaching is all about, too, how to do it and what to do. Um, Thank you, Jerry. And the last bullet point we have, God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. We need to stand up and be bold. What will matter in the day of judgment, obey the Lord Jesus Christ in all you do before you take your last breath. Um, do you realize that when you take your last breath, you will never be able again to talk to a lost person? So shouldn't it be a priority to reach out to all the lost people on earth while you still can? Witnessing is a learned talent. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. So this is Bill Bright. Remember who, him from Campus Crusade for Christ? Who knows who Bill Bright is? Yeah. So he was the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ, now, now known as Crew. In 1952, he wrote the Four Spiritual Laws. And this is what Jerry was talking about. According to Bill Bright, only 2% of Christians in America share their faith with others. Only 2%. Now it's, it's less than 2% now. 20 years, 20 years later, it's less than 2%. Almost to 1%. And that's ever said our faith, yep. ever. That's even one time. Don't even share it one time. So why must we go and tell? Any thoughts? Exactly. We're the only ones that matter that... They matter too, you know. Here's scripture. So, Jerry, can you read Romans 10? Romans 10, 13 to 15. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without somebody preaching to them? And how can they, anyone pre preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. <laughs> At Ephesians 3.11. There we go. <clears throat> God has placed eternity in the human heart. This is why we must go and tell. You can read that. <laughs> this means that God places an eternal longing or sense of eternity in the human heart. Unlike other forms of life, we have more to life than what we can see and experience in the here and now. So does knowing this give you more drive to share the gospel? Yes? Okay. So we are actually going to go to chapter 2, which is one of my favorite chapters. Uh, it's called Get To... Um, in this chapter, we must change our mindset. Oh, sorry. We must try and change our mindset about sharing our faith. We must view it as an awesome opportunity that is and not as some sort of drudgery or chore. It should be a joyful activity that we can't wait to do instead of the worst part of our week. Yeah, we're, we're talking about get to and not got to. I got it. Should mm -hmm. I make the guy do it? No, we get to share it. So how can this be done? It's a privilege. It's a privilege. It is. How can this be done? So we need to change our mindset from got to, like Jerry said, to got to, to get to. How many of you have said, oh, I got to go to the store. I got to go to my, my kid's soccer game or football game or whatever sports. How many people have said, I got to, just like that? I got to. Well, if we change our mindset to get to, it turns in not to a chore, but to a privilege. So we get to go to the store. We get to go to the soccer game. We get to X, Y, Z. It turns into a privilege. So we got to go to church. How many of you? I shouldn't even ask. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm guilty of this. 
I mean, months ago I said this to a friend and I stayed home one day and I, I heard beeping at the, I heard someone beeping on my driveway. I was in bed because I decided I'm going to take a week off. I will never do that again, <laughs> ever. Um, but now we get to go to church. We have that privilege of walking in these doors and hearing a great message or hearing one of our favorite songs for the worship team. I love that. We gotta pray. Turns into we get to pray. It's again a privilege to open our Bibles and pray because if we don't, we're letting Satan in. And hi. <laughs> Um, scripture. Oh, First Thessalonians 5.17 says pray without ceasing. Yep. The next one would be, I got to read my Bible. Becomes, I get to read my Bible. Now, in some countries, they don't even have a Bible. I know when I went to Brazil about 10 years ago, the women there, they're not even allowed to wear, read a Bible at all. Only the men. So we have that opportunity and that privilege to open our Bibles f free. Um, so it is, again, a privilege. And that comes out of Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We got to tithe. Becomes get to tithe. And when I read that, I see... I hear Satan going, well, you're struggling this month. You can't afford that. But when we change it from got to, to get to tithe, God brings it back to us. He blesses us tenfold. That comes from? Given it will be given to you. Luke 6, 38. We got to worship turns in to get to worship. We have that freedom to come in here and worship our God free. But if we say God to, then you're open up for Satan to be in your life. And then he goes, well, you don't have to go to church today. You don't have to pray. Yeah, lots of people don't have that freedom. And we do. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of being pulled away from us a little bit. But, uh, you know, we're, we've been blessed to have that freedom. Absolutely. So this scripture is a little bit longer. This is Psalm 150. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with this clash of symbols. Praise him with the resounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. We got to share our faith. We got to stop making this a chore or a drudgery. Um, because I know we're always in our like little bubble and we got here and we, you know, but we got to get out of our comfort zone. That's one of the things that we're doing when we say got to. We got to. We got to change it to get to. We get to walk out of here and see a friend after church and, hey, I learned this day at church. I think that's such a blessing. Also, when we, when we leave the church, I know there's a church that I've been in that has a big sign over the door that says, Welcome to going, as you're going into the mission field, this, this, you know, you're going into the mission field as we go out. Well, we get to go into the mission field. The mission field, yeah. You know? So again, I, again, it's a privilege, not oh, yeah, absolutely. A, a chore it's a or a drudgery. You know? It's a privilege to do, we, do that. I mean, do we have a burden for the lost? You know, everybody around us is, not everybody, but there's so many anymore, you know? And I've given out tracks, and um, I, that's one of the things I do quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I uh, might say when I go up to them, uh, 
would you like one of these? And um, sometimes they say to me, well, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. Well, that's fine. That's, that's good. But that doesn't mean, oh, well, you know, all these, these people know the Lord. No, no, you, you'll run into so many people that and we'll be talking about that don't know the Lord and then what to say and so forth. So for this final one, comes out of Mark 16, 15. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Who, who said that? Jesus, right? Is that just, if you want to, does that say, does that say well, if you want to. Mm. No. It's a command. It's a command to go and preach. And we're to do that. And again, only 2%, less than 2% Blessed. of Christians ever, ever share their faith. Yep. And w again, what a difference we, this, this work, the United States and the world would be if we would just go and tell. Absolutely. Mm. So by changing our mindset from got to to get to, we take the focus off ourselves and see the value in people and through the eyes of the almighty God. So we need to take that chore. And I'm not just saying the six things that I've listed here, which are very, very important, but on our daily days and weeks and everything, just go in the store. Like sometimes I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I really am. Um, so I'm going to challenge everyone in this room for the next 168 hours to, if you say to your spouse, I got to go to the store, what do you need? I want you to take every got to that you've talked about this week and change it to get to. And see what the difference is. Don't let Satan in. I am living proof of that. <laughs> Um, so what is, what is a soul worth? Any thoughts? <laughs> Any thoughts? It's quiet. All right, so that comes out of Genesis 126. God says, let us make mankind in our own image. So that's chapter two. Any thoughts, questions? Gary? <laughs> Any? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I am. Um, Correct. 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 And I look at got to versus get to. I look at Satan versus Jesus. Correct. Yes. That's why I make tons of lists. On my phone, it's like a mile long. If I, if I don't see it, I won't. If I don't write it down, I won't do it. It's like my job, you know. If I don't, if I don't write it down, you ain't getting it. So, sorry, y'all. For what you don't know, I'm a server, so my apologies. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Lori Buckner doesn't need a mic. <laughs> Before our, the, the teaching, we pray before our meal. 
Is there anything you would like me to find about? Now, mind you, we just came from the Ronald McDonald House. Our grandson is not going to, is not working here. We're distraught. This side is asking a young man, is there anything you want us to pray about? Young man says, yes. Would you say, I'm going to go to college. Would you say that I meet the right girl? Would you pray that I go to the right school? Gentlemen, grab hands. Now, mind you, we're sitting mm-hmm. I am just weeping. And... They get done praying, and I said to the gentleman, I said, I have never been in a restaurant and had that happen. This is what's going on with us. Will you pray for my family? Will you pray for my son? Will you pray for my grandson? Man, right there, grab one hand, yeah. pray. And so the server walks away. The gentleman says to us, would you two like to change the world for Jesus? Oh, gosh. I've been waiting for someone to do that for 40 years. <laughs> Absolutely. I get it. I get it often. No, I, I no you're fine. No, I I encourage it. I just had to, like that gentleman. He got to pray with him. That was intentional. That was a privilege for that. He get. He got. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, it spoke to our heart and and made a difference. Well, since you told that story, and it it happens more often than you think. Good. Um. I'm going to tell this story real quick since I think we have a few minutes or whatever. So if you all know, I lost my mother. Uh, I was told a month ago that she died of uterine cancer. What they didn't tell me, she died a month prior. So they didn't tell me until about a month and two days after it happened. Now, I want to back up. I don't have a relationship with my mom at all. I, she left me when I was 18. Um, so at that point, when he told me and I was working, uh, I had a bunch of mixed emotions. Anger, because nobody told me she was sick. She didn't call. Sadness, because you know, she gave birth to me. Um, shock, I had all these mixed emotions and I didn't know what to do. And I got to that point where I called my dad while I was doing menus. And then I called two really good friends of mine out in the car, just sobbing. Um, Then I eventually went home and told my husband. The next day, my husband's like, hey, since you're really upset, stay home. I said, I can't, I can't. It's like 1230, I go in at two, like, I don't got, I I can't do that. And so I went through the motions of a Saturday shift and at night, I had this beautiful couple, and we were joking it, so it made me, like, not think about things for a while. And then he looked up at me and said, uh, God told me to pray for you. And I was like, now, keep in mind, I didn't tell him anything. And I said to him after he said that, well, I just found out my mom passed away. And I told him briefly what happened. And they literally grabbed both hands. And we prayed right then and there. And I don't know if I can get through this. He looked at me afterwards and he said, I need to be obedient to the Lord. And the Lord told me to pray for you. Now, I could have just not been there, not received that, and gone on being angry and frustrated, sad. But when he told me that, I thought of the scripture, it said, be still and know that I am God. And as I listened to God in my ears and listening to this beautiful couple, all the anger, the angst, I still have a bit of sadness, and that's okay, just melted. And I just felt so at peace. And then I realized, why? Why, who am I going to be mad at? The person who told me? Am I going to be mad at my mom? Who am I mad at? So I let it go. 
let, let go and let God. That's also what I heard in my head. So, yeah, that happens more often than you think. Lots of times when I'm out giving tracts to people, and they take when we just want things, I say, can I pray for you about anything? And nine out of ten times, they'll, yeah. they'll, even if they don't believe, they'll say, yeah, all right. And just, we pray. Yeah. And then uh, we can go on from there, or maybe the, whatever happens after that. But uh, that's one thing that even people that don't believe in the Lord, when you say, pray, can I pray for you? Many, many do want prayer. It's, it's like we, they, they know that someone cares for them, yeah. even through yeah. tough times. Because yeah. as a server, it's, it's, it's a struggle sometimes because we never know what we're going to get. Like financially, I've been doing it for 20 years in the same place. Um, but I've been so blessed, so blessed um, by the people who walk in there. You never know. You never know who's going to bless you. <sighs> Any other comments? And when you go to when you go to restaurants, I'm just going to say that's an opportunity to to share your faith with the with the, with the server, uh, to leave little tracks afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, wherever we go, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the mission field out there. Absolutely. And, uh, whenever we're around people, you know, go and tell. And some of us say, well, think, oh, I can't do that. We'll learn how. <laughs> we'll learn how through this, through this study. Step one is getting out of your comfort zone, which is, I know it sounds easier said than done. And I want to say this and note laugh. But when I was a kid, I was a kid, I was very a very quiet person. Don't laugh. I said, don't laugh. I stayed in my little shell and I was happy and content. It wasn't yeah. until I started coming here that that, that doll went to the wayside. <laughs> um, and it's great. I can, I can be unique, I can be different, but I'm doing it for the Lord, which I, I think is incredible. Gary, you want to say something? I'm sorry. Can you? Oh. Yeah, sorry. I have already finished the book, and it's very—it's a very good book, and it reminds me of when I was very young, and I lived in Las Vegas, and we used to go down on the strip in Vegas and witness, and this reminds me of that during that period of time that we used to walk around the strip, and. The people there, it was the same type of thing. But the one thing I just want to say is that you, you don't know what is on a person's mind. And the one thing that you need to know is that everybody's different. Everybody has their own problems. Absolutely. And if you don't say something, that opportunity is gone. That moment is gone. And just that moment, that, that seed that was going to be planted is not planted. And so that, that's the, the, the moment that has been passed. And then the, the Lord has to get somebody else to do it for you, or maybe it can never be done before. Again, you don't know. You know, and it's it's a... That, that heart that at that moment, that heart that that person was at that moment opened because that word that you were going to say wasn't there. You know, I, I have to say that I'm one of the 2%. You know, I, I, I really am. I, I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm a, I'm a never was. Not in Jesus' eyes. But, but I do speak. So... Well, thanks for the transition to chapter three. It was perfect. This chapter is my personal favorite, the winning, winning, winning chapter. And it says, 
What are three possible things that can happen when we share our faith? <clears throat> Number one, the person can accept Jesus Christ. Two, the person can reject Jesus Christ. And what Gary was saying, we can plant a seed. So I made it, well, the book has a little chart, and I recreated it. When they accept it, it's good. It's, we're winning, right? When we're planting a seed, we're also good and winning. But when they reject or walk away or they cuss us out and run away from us, that's bad or losing, right? So 66% of the time we share our faith is a winning situation. Aren't those pretty good odds? First Peter 4.14 4, says, If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. And Luke? Luke 6, 22, 23. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Because great is your reward in heaven. But that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. Peter reminds Christians that it is a privilege to be allowed to be insulted for Christ's name. Humans might insult you, but God's spirit rests upon you. That fact is worth rejoicing. So after these two verses, let's revisit that chart with changes. Anybody see the difference? What's the difference? We're all winning. We're all winning. Right. Now, why? What did we just say? What did you just read? What's that? Because if you plant a seed, whether they accept it or reject it, you are obedient to the call. So Correct. Right. Win, win, winning, winning, winning. Yes, dear. Can you mic her? Jerry, can you mic Sue? Oh, sure. Okay. Got it. Hi. Just one thing that if someone does reject us, that just gives you an opportunity if they walk away from you or what? Don't give up on them. Pray for them. Yes. You may not even know their name. I've given names to people that I just like fictitiously gave names to people so that I can call them Bob or John or whatever and pray for the people. So yes. it's, it's, that's another extension of if they reject you, that's your opportunity to pray for them and God will then use maybe somebody else along the way. You took the words right out of my mouth, actually. <laughs> you know, that you were talking about. Yes. And then, you know, it'll be a kind of a, an aha moment for them. Yes. And they'll be like, oh, I remember that girl talking about that. And now, you know, look what's happening in my life and how, you know, what she did, what she said really did make, make an impact. So it might not happen then, but it might happen in time to come. So. And that's okay. Yeah. And that is okay. Because you also planted that seed. Yep. You planted the seed and, you know, it's Like Sue said, I can plant a seed to somebody, and they might reject me, but that's okay because I plant a seed, but six months, year, whatever it is, and God's timing, not in our timing, in God's timing, um, Brian might meet the same person, and they might have that, like you said, an aha moment. Excuse me. Sorry. I'm going to sing a song. No. <laughs> yes. 
I got time. We got all you know, time. Um, Sounds I, good to me. I used to uh, be in a, in a ministry that would, was on the uh, Seattle boardwalk, singing music, singing gospel music. And, uh, you know, we got done and we felt so proud that people just liked it. They applauded and everything else. But this preacher walked up to me one day and he said, uh, one night at, as we was uh, finishing up, he says, oh, you, you guys are gospel singers. I said, yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. He said, well, did you have an altar call? I said, no. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. Preach the gospel, sing the gospel, but always finish your job, which is lead people to the Lord. Um, altar calls are a great thing to hear people's witnesses and to ask them to come forward and to ask them if they want to accept Jesus because people are shy, and if, if you don't give them opportunity to, to come forward and accept Jesus, they may be... They may, they may be reaching out for something, and you can sing all you want, you can preach all you want, but unless you ask them, is there anything that we can pray with you about? And, and that's, that's the whole key right there. I totally agree with you. Now, I know probably most of us, or all of us, have a reason why you're in this room or in this church is because someone talked to you about Jesus. For me, it was my husband, and then when I started coming to church, it was a few ladies that were just incredible that got me through my hardest times um, in my young, young times. I'm older now. <laughs> we all are, right? <laughs> um, and I'm grateful for that. But we all have that one person or group of people that told us about the gospel, told us about evangelizing and told us about Jesus Christ and that's why we're sitting here today or uh, thank God thank Jesus sometimes when I'm out and about um, I'll just I feel an unction from the Lord to, to go and tell and sometimes I have not obeyed that unction I then a little while back I saw Someone sitting outside a store. It was cold outside. And in fact, this time it was around, we, the COVID was going on. And I could tell that this guy wasn't, he, to me, I, I was thinking he was homeless. And what did I say to myself? Start walking. Oh, it's COVID. Oh, I can't go. No, no. You missed an opportunity. I mean, that was not what I should have done. I, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, who am I thinking of? Me, me, me. Right. It's all about me, me, me. Why isn't it about that other person out there? I mean, just, I mean, just in your mind, remember that if, but for maybe God using us, and that's not to put us on a pedestal, but we have the opportunity for God to use us, that person's going to go to hell. Maybe. You don't maybe. know. <laughs> but what an opportunity it is to tell others about, about the Lord, you know? And just just know that um, lots of times I guess like I say I feel the unction about from the Lord and just to go and tell but just out there and you know one of the things we're going to talk about next week is uh, sharing uh, God through tracks through pieces of uh, little, little brochures or New Testaments or whatever and, and giving to the people. And that's one way we can do that, too. You know, there's different ways we're going to talk about. But just go and tell. Go and tell. Go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what we're told to do. It's not a maybe. It's a, it's a, it's a go. It's a commission. It's to go and tell. You know? It's a privilege. It, and, and it is a privilege. It's a privilege. You know, the God's using me. My gosh. You know, I mean... Lots of times when you, when you, when I talk about the Lord to others, and a couple of times they came to the Lord, and I mean, you just, you just thank, praise God, you know, yeah. wow, he, he, he actually used me, yeah. me, who but am I, I? but he used me. Mm. But feel those nudges, God always is going to nudge you, it's how you're going to react to that nudge. 
Are we going to ignore it? Or are we going to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? You're nudging me. Yeah, or be afraid. Go. Be afraid. And crawl back. No. You can't do no. that. Get out of our comfort God's zone. God's with us. God's with us all the time. Absolutely. Um, the only time we lose is when we don't share our faith. Every time is a winning situation. So every time we talk about Jesus Christ, whether it's being rejected, planting a seed, or even accepting, we're still winning. <clears throat> and would you like to read that? <clears throat> this is profound. It is a privilege and a blessing to be allowed to be rebuked, insulted for the name of Jesus. For sharing his name, who he is, what he's done for us, and what unbelievers need to do to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so one way to have the glory of God shine in our lives and reflect on others is if we are rejected in the name of Jesus. People may insult us, but they're, they're inselling Jesus too. You know, it's... Uh, just like the other verse we read, uh, Matthew 5, 11 and 12. Blessed are you, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say things kind of, um, all kinds of things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For the same way they persecute the prophets they were, who were before you. I was uh, in line at a grocery store, and... Um, a shop right, I guess it was. I'm checking out, and I just think it's, uh, I always have my <laughs> uh, tracks on me, and I see the the fellow there who's uh, checking out the checker, and um, I say I say to him, um, uh, "Did you get one of these?" And uh, he said he looked at it and said, "No, I don't want it. I'm not interested." And I said, "Well." Well, you know, Jesus loves you. Can I pray? Well, I didn't, at that time, I didn't say pray for you, but I noticed that he had a little pin on. And what was the pin? It was a rainbow pin, a rainbow pin. So, um, and he just, he started quoting a couple of verses from the Bible, like uh, homosexual is an abomination and all. And I said, well, I said, well, Jesus loves you. Can I pray for you? And, and he said, no. I went back to the store another time, and I got in his line again, and I didn't recognize him. <laughs> but this time, he was more, more open, and uh, we talked just briefly again. He's checking the people out, and uh, he, did, he did take the uh, track, wow. and um, I just said, well, read that, and Jesus loves you, and he just gave me a fist bump, so, you know. So you planted the seed. Huh? You planted the seed the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but don't be afraid. God, God, God's with you, you know. <laughs> we'll learn about the different things, about the uh, excuses why we don't share the Lord. That's next week and, yeah. and uh, so forth. So, but don't be afraid. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege. <laughs> I, we're going to goof up. But we're human. That's why we goof up. We're human. Yes, yes. I mean, it's, 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 nobody's perfect. So we will goof up. We will. I, I goofed up. You know, I remember a couple of times, really bad, <laughs> really bad goof up. You know, and I kind of just, you know, put my head down and kind of just faded away. <laughs> you know, but we will goof up. So it, it can happen. So we just keep on plugging away, you know, doing the best we can. So. And again, Take the focus off of you and on to that person, you know. Do we, do we care? I mean, how many times did uh, Mark Cahill say that in the little care? video we saw? Do we care? Yeah. I mean, you might think, oh, well, that, I don't know that person. Well, God does. He's one of, you know, God we, has made, it's made all of us. And um, it's, a, again, <laughs> we've said it before, but it is a privilege to be, to be used by God, you know. <laughs> I mean, just again, just think if all of us went out and we had an opportunity that, that God uses to save one soul. Praise God. We'll maybe hopefully see that person in heaven one day. And 
my gosh, what, <laughs> it's, it's such a privilege. Oh, I, I was in, uh, and so did Margie, uh, we were at the uh, Salem County Correctional Facility and we both at different times were there at uh, sharing God's word to w women's, women's Bible studies. And oh my gosh, if you want to do something that you that really can make a difference that God can use on, go there. I mean, the people there, they're... they're, they're at their worst. Hmm? They're at their worst. Yeah, yeah. But they're, but and and they're but they're there. They they're locked up. They're hungry for something. Yeah, yeah, they are hungry for something, and um, a couple. I have we 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 have uh, well, I, the two people when I was there, I was, we I did that for about a year and a half, two years, um, came to the Lord, and you know, we just asked them mm -hmm. when we're closing the when we're closing the. Um, the session with them. Would any of you like to pray to come to know Jesus? And um, a couple of them did. And my gosh, you know, afterwards, just, I just think, what a privilege it is to be used by the Lord. But not all that won't happen all the time. But still, again, you're planting a seed. Yeah. You know, whether you're giving them a track or you're praying for them. You know, and uh, it's it's always good to have tracks on you too. And we'll again talk about that next Absolutely. week, but um, to share so that when you're out and about, you can share the Lord. I mean, that's not to say you can't. If you don't have anyone, you can't go up and ask them if there's something I can pray for you about. You know, I found as I'm, I find as I'm, I'm older now, <laughs> I take more trips to the doctors, <laughs> and that's a good place to talk to other people when they're sitting around in the waiting room. You know. Um, just start this kind of little conversation with them and, and ask them, is there something I can pray for you about? And uh, what a blessing it is to be used there, wherever, wherever the Lord leads. Yeah. Mm. With so much hate in this world, we got to show some love out there. Seriously? Yeah. I don't think she I was at an auction, and there were a bunch of people standing around, and we were talking about equipment and stuff. And the one guy had bought some stuff that had to be picked up the next day. And uh, they, they said, well, you'll be able to help, won't you? And I said, and for a nanosecond, Satan got in my head. If I say I have to go to church, they're going to think less of me. But then I, I said, well, I, I go to church Sunday morning all the time. And the demeanor of the whole group changed. And two of the people that were standing there, well, we're Catholics. We haven't been to church for a long time. And then the other ones, they got talking amongst themselves. Well, what church do you go to? Where is it? What time are the services? And I just thought that was awesome. Where I, I didn't want to say, like, come out because I didn't know what all the other people thought, and I thought I'd be demeaned for saying I had to go to church or that I was a Christian, and that was the wrong feeling that I should have had. I should have been joyful and say, does any of you have questions? Do you want to come to church with me? And then when they started asking the questions, they said, well, where do you go to church? What time or certain? Well, I could make it that day. That's just all. Thank you, Robin. Any thoughts, questions? Yeah, go ahead, Ron. So, uh, the, the one that really sticks out to me is 1 Peter 4.14. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, if you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the, you, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. And basically what what all, you know, family members, relatives, f close friends, we get we get in the losers bracket. We we keep putting ourselves like we're losing because we're trying and we're trying and we're trying and we think we're losing and we should just shut up and not say anything anymore. 
But what this is saying is when you're insulted, when they get pissed at you, when they get mad at you, God's giving you a Holy Spirit to increase your faith, to increase your testimony, to increase your witness. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep on keeping on. So that's what I, you know, that's what I get out of 1 Peter 4.14. 4. And when you're re- rereading that, I had to say again, we, need to, we also need to put on the full armor of God as well when we go out there. Because we will be insulted. We will be hurt. We'll be attacked. Not only by that person, but by Satan. Satan doesn't want us to do this. So we need to put that full armor of God on. What yeah. we are. Yeah. Again, we just, it's not about us. It's about sharing. Take the focus off us about, and just love on others. Just, that's all. <laughs> you know? And I'm, I'm not really an extrovert myself. You know, but I just, you know, I mean, how can we not have a burden for others? I mean, do we want to see them go to hell? Well, you don't know them, but God does, you know. And again, if only each of us would share our faith, what a different, as Christians, what a different country we'd be living in. But we don't, 2%, 2%. Less than 2%. It's crazy. So go and tell. Say one now. Say one next week. <laughs> I uh, heard someone say before, like, imagine if we all went to a conference to learn how to talk about sports. And then we went and we talked about sports, you know, like, and we're scared to bring it up and this and that. But, like, we're supposed to be a community of people who, like, we're filling ourselves with Jesus. We're spending time with him, with the Holy Spirit. We come to church. We do this small group. Do that. Whatever fills the heart is what comes out of your mouth, right? So, like, If we have that relationship, this should just be spilling out of us, but we're so held back by fear. Um, And I love, like, the fact that Paul says, he talks about how, like, he went to people with fear and trembling, but he also knew it wasn't on him. It was on the spirit. So, like, if the spirit is already working in that person, that's awesome. Like, go with it. If they're not, thanks. All right, thanks. Have a good day. Like, it might feel like they're rejecting you. But like that quote said, they're, they're rejecting Jesus. And like the worst that's going to happen is they have to think about Jesus for the next three minutes. <laughs> like, and that's a good thing, right? Yeah. That's winning. And um, I think there's been a lot of loss of life, especially of young people, even just in this county recently. And like God, we need to take that and we can, we can be sad and we can mourn, but we need to flip that. And like God is, he he is preparing people to hear the gospel. Like, people want something more. And, like, it's so easy to think, like, oh, no, America, we're just materialistic atheists. Nobody, everybody's angry. Nobody wants to hear about God. But, like, man, depression and suicide in this country is so high. Right? Like, people oh, yeah. want it. People want something Staggering. more. And we're, we're just, like, we're just afraid because we don't want to get made fun of. And, like, we just got to take that and just chuck it. Because it's a lie. <laughs> and like, I love that. <laughs> and God is so kind. Like, it's the true. first time you share, I bet he'll blow your mind. Like, just, ah, just do it. Okay. And, oh, wait, one more thing. Grandparents, because oh, this is, you know, I, I love youth. Share stories with your grandkids. Absolutely. Like, you're time is now like share with these kids share with the next generation like we have to build them up this generation if they're not homeschooled they are seeped in this atheist type of culture right whatever we see that's all there is share with your grandkids share what jesus has done for you like just do it (laughs) because they need it they need to see that jesus is still working that the world doesn't just suck that there is hope they need to see these things um, just do it. <laughs> we got to put more love in this world. Yeah. And it starts with us. Yeah. Just do it. You, you don't got to, but you get to, right? Yeah. And what a privilege, what a pr- privilege it is to share the, our faith with, with others. Don't think about yourself. Think, Absolutely. Think about all those blessed people out there. We ought to, we ought to get a sign here. All right. <laughs>
Hey, Doug. <laughs> here you've, you've gone out to the mission field. field. You know, just to remind us, that's, that's the mission field. That's the mission field out there. Yeah, sometimes you we know? do need that reminder. Hmm? Or sometimes we do need that reminder. You know, like, we can't just go out there and just... Yeah, I mean, we're all people. Yep. And we, we want others to know about God if we, you know, why not? Don't be afraid. Absolutely. <laughs> take, again, take, take the onus off you and, and love on others. So next week, we're going, Jerry's going to do chapters four and five. Um, yeah, it's about excuses. One of the chapters is about excuses. We, we come up with why we, oh, why, we, why we can't do it. And we always want all about uh, sharing our faith with using tracks. And I'm also going to show a, uh, a short video of, of uh, Mark Cahill uh, speaking to, uh, to people. Yes. And then as time goes on, we'll show we're, we're uh, going to show a, uh, a track with, where he, he's out sharing the gospel, yep. you know. He's pretty phenomenal, that guy. He's a full, full-time evangelist, full-time evangelist, so. He's got a whole channel on YouTube if you want to check it out. Yeah, markcahill.org. Mm -hmm. So can, Brian, can you, I'll just go and grab this. Can you pray us out? Sure. Father God, as we come to a close, we, uh, we thank you for uh, the lesson today and uh, uh, the importance of this lesson. And, uh, Lord, help us to go out into a lost and dying world and be a light and be uh, obedient to uh, the command to share our faith that uh, we might make a difference in this world. <clears throat> and help us to remember that uh, we don't save anybody. You do the saving. It's just our job to uh, plant the seed. And, <clears throat> and all this we pray in the matchless name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. So if anybody's interested in a book, they're $10. I, I would love for, like, if you're here with a spouse, just grab one. We only have 24 copies. We can get more if you need it. Yeah. Um, we also have 40 copies of the study guide and a summary inside the study guide. So um, when you go out, meet Jerry or Lisa out there to grab yours. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's books for sale up.